There is always good that's waiting for you down the line. The question is, are you waiting to receive it? Or are you sitting there with your hands out waiting for something bad to happen to you? And today we're going to talk about how to stop worrying and stop thinking that something bad is going to happen to you. And this came from a conversation that I had in one of my coaching groups. And one of the people that was inside the coaching group said, you know, and everything's going well. Like, that's the crazy thing. And he's, he's talking about how everything's going well. Like his business is going so well. This is the biggest year that they've ever had. He's like, my relationship with my wife is going so well. My kids freaking love me. We've been traveling. Everything's going amazing. And I just still get this deep feeling that something's about to f*** up. And we started having this conversation. And as we started having this conversation, there's other people who are in this coaching group as well. We're like, oh my God, I feel the exact same way. I feel bad because this year was bad for a lot of people, but it was so good for me. When am I going to get mine? Like they're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And the, the thing that you have to realize is who in the hell, first off, said that things can't go well forever? Who like? Like it's this weird universal law that if things go well for a while, a while you're gonna get punched in the face at some point in time. Who, who said that? Like, where did that come from? I think it comes from the deep internal fears of always looking for something to go wrong or something that is bad as a way of survival and that's what our brain looks for. So it's like, oh my God, good, 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 good. Some, uh, you know, a tiger's got to attack me. You know, if you're, you're walking through the plains and it's been a beautiful day, you're walking by a bush, you're like, oh my God, there might be a tiger in there. And we're constantly looking for the next tiger to come out and attack us. No matter how well it's going or how bad it's going, it seems like we're always waiting for the next thing to come kick us in the crotch, right? And so do you secretly worry that something bad is going to come up for you? You know, I, I hear a lot of people, I'm not a parent yet, I will be one day, and I hope I don't do this, but I hear a lot of parents that do this, where they'll be watching their children sleep and they're in like complete joy complete bliss they have all of the love chemicals the oxytocin the serotonin all of them just flowing through their body and they're like this thing i love this thing this child so much what would i ever do if i lost them and it's like this this beautiful moment of just being in the state of just absolute love but they think to themselves i hope i don't ever lose them I hope there's nothing tragic that happens. I hope they stay healthy forever. I hope that they don't ever die before me. I'm gonna ask you this question and I want you to be honest with yourself because this is a rhetorical question because I can't hear you because I'm talking to a microphone. But have you ever done that before? Where you've been in this moment? Maybe you don't have children, but maybe you've been watching a movie with someone that you're in a relationship with and you're laughing and you're joking, you're having the best time and you're like, oh my God, I'm so freaking full of love. I hope I don't f this up. I hope she doesn't ever leave me. I hope she doesn't ever find out who I truly am and then she won't love me. Have you ever been in that situation before where you're just like, please don't let the next thing happen and we're just waiting for the shoe to drop. If you're doing that, the, the worst part about that is that if you're starting to think about a potential future that doesn't even truly exist, it's just something that you're making up in your head, you're literally pulling yourself from one of the most beautiful present moments that you could have in your life and you're destroying it. You're literally the most present you could be with that child when you're thinking about that love. You're literally the most present you could be with this person when you're thinking about that love. And then your brain immediately goes to, I hope that this doesn't get taken from me. And that's one of the hardest parts about love is that love, the person that we love, could go and leave us at some point in time. There could be something tragic that could happen to, to them at some point in time. And so we almost pull back the love that we have in fear that something could happen to them. Once again, it's waiting for the other shoe to drop is a phrase that people always talk about. Something bad is coming. Things have been going well for so long and some people have had year. When is my shit year gonna come? And we hold ourselves back from our potential. And once again, it's like, it's like the law of the universe. Like it's gotta happen sometimes. Like that's what people actually feel like. There's a, every time I hear someone talking about potential terrible future outcome, it's always like, it's gotta happen. As almost like it's, it's definitely a thing that's happening in the future. So why do people feel this way? Why is it that we feel this way? Where does it come from? Like, is it, it has to be something that we've learned a little bit. It has to be something that also is part of our nature and inside of our brain, it's nature and nurture as well. But it comes from a scarcity mindset. 
that there is not enough good to go around all of the time. Where did we learn that? When did you ever find out that there's not enough good to go around all of the time? Why does it have to go bad? Why can't it be great forever? It's like when people say, oh, you're taking three steps forward and one step back. Like life is just three steps forward, two steps back, or two steps forward, three steps back. And there's always like a, a forward and then the back, and then a forward and then the back, and then forward and then the back. And the thing about that is that it's all perception in that situation. It is all perception. The back, the quote unquote back that you feel is all perception. What seems like a step back could just be a redirection in the correct way that you should be going. That's really what it is. It's a detour on the path that you're trying to go to. It is the universe in some sort of way saying, hey, dude, maybe it's time to pivot. Like this isn't the actual path. Let me move you just a slight bit so that you can make sure that you're going the right path. That's really what it, it should be. The way I like to think about it is, is I've been practicing a lot in my backyard with a bow and arrow, right? I have a compound bow and I have a, a target that's in the back. Whenever I shoot that thing, it is, there is no way, there's no way in physics that I can get that thing, that bow, that arrow to fly forward unless I pull that bow back. So if a redirection doesn't necessarily hit home with you and you're not like, oh yeah, maybe it's not a redirection. If that doesn't necessarily hit home with you, what if the pull back, the step back is actually a way to pull you back to then propel you forward? Because just like an arrow, the arrow is not going to go anywhere unless you pull it back and then let go. Here's the interesting thing about it as well though. The further that you pull it back, the more tension that there is on the string, the further it's going to fly. And so sometimes these momentary quote unquote setbacks actually are something that we need to propel us further into the future. We can all agree, and we've talked about this, I don't know, countless times in the podcast, where if something happens to you that is quote unquote bad in your past, when you're going through it, it doesn't feel amazing. But then when you look back on it five years down the road, 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, you're like, I hated that moment, but there is nothing that you could pay me to take away the lessons that I learned in that moment. Those lessons are the things that are given to you by the universe to then propel you. And so maybe it's not a step back, maybe it's just a new lesson for you. Maybe it's a lesson so that you can make a little bit of a shift in your life to start to actually change what's going on. What if it's just a pivot? But really what it comes down to is what you're focusing on the most. So what are you focusing on? When you go through your day, are you focusing on what you're afraid of? Are you focusing on what you don't want to happen? I had an event uh, a few months ago that was in Mexico. One of the, the women that was at the event came up to me after the first day and she's like, Rob, I had this massive breakthrough today. And I was like, cool, what was that breakthrough? She goes, I've realized that I've never, my entire life, I've almost never focused on what I want. I focus on what I don't want. And I go, how's that working for you? And she goes, I get a whole lot of what I don't want. I'm like, I know. And the reason why is because you're such a powerful being at your core. Every single one of us is such a powerful being at our core that we're like a magnet attracting what we focus on. And so if we're focusing on what we're afraid of, we're going to get more things to be afraid of. If we're focusing on all of the bad that we want to get, a, we don't want to have in our life, we're going to actually attract that bad into our life. And so if you're focusing on those things, you're going to get those things. I've used this example before too. But there was one time that was, it, and it really hit home with me when I was, I was oddly enough, going go-karting from one of my friend's birthdays. And we have a, a track here in Austin. There's a guy who used to be an F1 driver. He literally drove like in Le Mans. He drove all of the, all the kinds of crazy cool things that he did. And he was a French guy and he was funny and he was all laughing and making us laugh the whole time. He was talking to us about the carts that went like 50 miles an hour. They were crazy fast. This mile long track that he had. And he was making jokes and then he got really freaking serious. And it was like the energy of the room shifted. And he goes, there will be a crash at some point in time. When there is a crash, do not look at the crash. Look past the crash to where you want to go. And then everyone kind of chuckled a bit. He's like, no, this is the most serious thing I can tell you. Do not look at the person who, <clears throat> who crashes. Look past it. Because if you look at it, you will absolutely hit it. And that's exactly how life is. Whatever you're looking at, you're aiming at. If you go back to the bow and arrow example, if you're looking at something, that's the thing that you're going to hit. So are you looking at the bad? Are you looking at what you're afraid of? 
Are you looking at your deepest, darkest fears, your insecurities? Or are you looking at the place that you want to go, the vision that you want, the life that you want to create for yourself? It's the same exact thing with motorcycles. I've never driven a motorcycle, but I do know this from friends who ride motorcycles. And we've talked about it is you're taught when you go through a turn to look at where you want to go. You don't look at the ground of where your, your motorcycle currently is. You look at where you want to go because when you look at where you want to go, you will lean in to where, where you want to go. Just makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, when you're shooting a basketball, you're not looking at the basketball. What are you looking at? where you're trying to shoot the basketball. Like there's so many examples that I can give you of parts of your life, whether it's being on a go-kart, whether it's being on a motorcycle, whether it's being playing basketball, is that you're always trying to look the place that you wanna go. But for some reason, our brain just automatically goes to what we don't want. And if you continue to look at what you don't want, you're going to get more of what you don't want. And so how can you wake up every single day and focus on the things that you do want? to look at them as if you are an archer. I went and shot, I went and shot my, my bow and arrow today. I was at the, the range, right? And there's a little, we're 25 yards away and there's a little teeny tiny, it's like an inch and a half white circle. There is nothing else that I'm looking at. Everything else kind of blurs away and I stare at the white circle because if I look at anything else, I'm not going to hit the white circle. The white circle is in the center of the target. All of the rest of the entire target is black. And if I'm trying to hit it, shouldn't I look at the thing? Like that would make sense. And so if you're trying to, to create the life that you want, shouldn't you look at your goals as far as what is it you're trying to create? So what are you focusing on most? That's an important thing to ask yourself. Bad times, quote unquote, bad times that you see in your life are necessary sometimes for you to pivot, for you to change, for you to make adjustments in your life. But what if you never worried about something going wrong? How, how weird would that feel? Like, be honest for a second. If you just never actually worried about anything going wrong, if you just believe that God or the universe or your own personal power is going to make it happen, that's going to, it's going to get you to pay the bills. It's going to create the life that you want. It's going to create the business that you want, the relationship that you want, the children that you want, the finances that you want. It's just going to happen. What if you woke up every single day with that confidence of I'm going to get what I want? And the reason why I'm going to get what I want is because every morning when I wake up, I write my goals down. I write them down. Even if I wrote them down the, the day before, the day before, the day before, the day before, I write my goals down every single day. Because when you write your goals down every single day, you are focusing on that tiny little white dot in the target. How could I possibly hit that target if I'm not looking at it? How can I possibly hit my goals unless I'm waking up every single day and focusing on those goals? as if I was trying to hit that target. I'm focusing on it because that is my target. I'm focusing on it because that's where I'm going. I'm focusing on it because I know that if I put all of my energy into that thing, I'm gonna get it. And it's exactly the same for you. You are a powerful being, more powerful than you could possibly imagine. And so if you're looking at what you don't want, you're going to get what you don't want. You are a freaking massive magnet. And if you're, if you're going, oh man, I'm just always poor. I'm just always broke. We all have that friend that always talks about how broke they are all the time. They're focusing on it. And guess what? I have friends like that that have been, you know, friends since high school that have talked about how broke they are. I graduated high school. What year are we in? I graduated high school. Uh, it's been forever. 15 years ago, coming up on 15 years. I have a friend who was a great friend in high school. He's a great friend in college. And he always talked about how broke he is. And every single time I see him, at some point in time, I know he's gonna talk about how broke he is. And guess what? He's still freaking struggling. Why? Because he's literally setting himself up for struggle every single day because that's what he's focusing on. And so if he were to wanna make an adjustment, he would just go, I'm gonna make money this year. I'm gonna make money this year. I'm gonna make money this year. And he would start to journal every single day. And guess what would happen? His ideas would come out. His ideas would come out. His energy would start focusing on going into the direction that he wants versus what he doesn't want. And really what he would do is he would start to shift his mindset. This entire episode is about shifting your mindset to waiting for something good to happen at all points in time. There is always good that's waiting for you down the line. There's always good that's waiting for you down the line. It's always just sitting there waiting to give it to you. The question is, are you waiting to receive it or are you sitting there with your hands out waiting for something bad to happen to you? Whatever you focus on, you will get. There is no bad that's coming for you. There is only good that's coming for you, but you have to set your sights on that thing every single day, the same way that you're only gonna hit that target when you see the target. The question is, what target are you 
focusing on. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. There are some people today, right now, possibly even listening to this episode, that are still pissed off about something that happened to them 10 years ago. What a waste.